you deal with a lot of incarcerated women. Tell me about that. What, how is, what, what, what is that experience like? Wow. Wow. So you're talking about pregnant people giving birth in prison because you yeah. just gave America and the world some insight on pregnant women in prison and having their babies, their little infants taken out of their arms. How horrific that is. Hi, this is Robert Wilkins, a.k.a. Basketball Tall. Welcome to my channel. You are in for a treat today. Have you ever thought about wanting to help somebody? Do you have it within your heart, that desire to improve someone's life? Or maybe you've had experiences of your own that maybe you feel that what you've gone through and the education and knowledge that you gain along the way that might be able to benefit or help somebody on this journey of life. Because let's face it, we all go through things and we all go through different things, some more tragic than others. But we all have something that we can look back on and wish would have done something differently. My guest today, she's a pro. Her name is Janice Cummings. And she's from the West Coast in the great state of California, from the Bay Area. And she's going to bring some insight and some knowledge to you that I think that's going to be able to help somebody on this journey of life. Now, let me tell you a little bit about her. She's a published poet, a CEO and founder of You Win Working with Me, LLC. She is an avid supporter of social justice and for educating, nurturing, and supporting women and families. Her career spans over 35 years in human services and nonprofit. She retired three years ago as a medical social worker with pregnant incarcerated women. Janice is a motivational speaker. She coaches women recovering from emotional abuse and trains staff on issues such as domestic violence, incarceration, staff development, and caregiver burnout. Her expertise has been spotlighted on webinars, Facebook live broadcasts, and podcasts. Her book of poems titled Splashes Through Life, chronicles her early life experiences having suffered from childhood trauma. The book has been used as an instrument for healing emotional and psych psychological wounds in her life. Please welcome Janice Cummings. How are you today? I am good. Thank you so much, Robert, for that beautiful introduction. Well, I'm just tell telling it like I see it. All right. You know, there are a lot of people out there and looking at the span of your career, you've helped a lot of people. So tell me this, Janice, what prompts you to get into the profession in which you chose? Actually, I didn't start off with, with this profession. I actually started off uh, um, going over old files and getting them ready for microfilm. And when I was going through the files and stuff, it came, it occurred to me that a lot of people were getting railroaded. When I was reading the information, I because I've always been uh, the type of person that for people that couldn't speak for themselves, I would always want to speak up for them. So as fate would have it, or God would, more, more or less God would have it, an opening came up in another in another area, and it was working with juveniles. And so I started off working in juvenile probation with parents with unruly kids, and uh, that's where my career started. And since then, it's just evolved. But I didn't really know that that this was going to be my path at the time that I accepted the calling, because. I was trying to run away from it, but when you have the calling, it's not the kind of thing that you can run away from. You just kind of, you, you go to sleep, you wake up with it. Every time you turn around, you, you see it. And my motivation came from the perspective of a child because I grew up in a domestic violence uh, environment and it was the children that couldn't speak for themselves. So all of that compiled together is uh, fueled my passion to help 
people and specifically women because usually they are the breadwinners or they're they're the house they're they have the single households and the decisions that they make definitely affect the children so that's the long version okay. now, i heard you mention juvenile probation and parole yeah. now uh -huh. that was my avenue of expertise okay okay <laughs> of course and i see here that you hold a BA in psychology, yes. an MA in holistic health education and nonprofit right. leadership, as right. well as you hold two coaching certificates and a paralegal degree. Right. Wow. Wow. So come on, for those people that are out there that has that passion to want to be able to do social work, what is it mm -hmm. that they need to do? First thing, work your own program. Because you can't be effective unless you deal with your own stuff. And I know a lot of people work in the profession. It's easy to tell somebody else to do something, but until you do the work, it's, it, that would be my first suggestion. Work your own program, deal with your own issues, bring them out in the forefront. And the next thing would be psychology because I, combine them both because I, I thought the medical model was too restrictive because I think people's background has a lot to do with how they show up in the world. And I don't like labeling people. So I mix the holistic health with the psychological piece, but the, you can always use the psychology because the psychology is the foundation of any profession that you go in when you're working with people and human services. So if you're really interested in it, work your own program, develop your own treatment plan, and then go from there and continue. It's continuous education because you just get better. That's all you do. You don't yes. reach the top. You just get better and you constantly keep replenishing that information. So that would be the start. Work yourself first. You know, you talked about continuing education. Uh, the agency, the state agency that I was with prior to retirement, you know, we were required to uh, meet at least minimum 40 hours every year of continuing education. And the majority of that was basically dealing with mental health. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, so when we went to a lot of these trainings, you know, we were around basically people like you. Mm -hmm. True. So explain to everyone a little bit more about holistic. What is that actually? Holistic health is where you combine the mind, body, and spirit into helping the person. You just don't look at their disease or what their mouth adaptive behavior. You look at where they came from, what happened to them. Because if you want to do... Um, trauma-informed services, you don't look at the behavior, you ask yourself what happened to them to cause them to behave that way. So there's so many different things that are coming out. So you wanna keep abreast to the new things that are coming out and you wanna integrate that in. So holistic is just a combination of all of that into healing into the healing process. And I like that because I look at each person individually and where they came from, what happened to them, um, how they're functioning today. So that's why I went into the holistic health. So would it be fair to say you're dealing also, we're talking mind, body, and spirit? spirit yes, spirit. That's Thank very you. important. Very important. And a lot of times the medical model doesn't utilize the spiritual yeah. aspect. And I feel in, in my 35 years of working with people, they come from that foundation. They may have ventured from it, right? But they grew up with a grandmother or a mother or someone in their life that had a spiritual base. Yeah. And it's still in there. It's still in there. For those of you that would like to gather more additional information or maybe follow uh, Janice, I would encourage you, you can go to her website. That is you win working with me. You is the alphabet. You then the complete words win 
workingwithme.com. And that way you can also tap into some of her poetry, her poems. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I did listen to one. <laughs> and it was it was very neat, very neat. So I encourage everyone, go on over there, check her website out, and also tune in and let's get that process, including working on you. Yes, yes. Well, tell me this, Janice. Mm -hmm. Now, also, I know that you have some roots right here in the state of Oklahoma. Yes. And, you know, not just that, right in my back, my backyard, my, my hometown here, where, in which I reside. I know. Isn't it amazing how we connected here? Yes. It did. Nothing's by accident, is it? <laughs> you know, I, uh, I attended a, a workshop, online training, and it talked about... Uh, collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so collaborate with others. And you have responded to a messenger, uh, one of the, something, well, I think one of my videos that you saw, yes, and you responded to that. And we, that's how we connected. Yes. That process. <laughs> there you are way over the West coast and I'm way over here and then close to the Midwest. <laughs> okay. More South more than anything. And yes being able to bring someone like you on this channel to be able to educate, encourage, motivate, inspire others that may, because we all, like I said earlier, we all go through things. Yes, we do. But a lot of folks don't know where to turn or what to do. And just going to your site or watching this vlog can make a difference in somebody's life to help make their mind up on what they may want to do in life or where they need to go for some directions or assistance. Now tell me, Janice, I noticed that in your bio, you deal with a lot of incarcerated women. Tell me about that. What, how is, what, what, what is that experience like? Actually, it was one of the best experiences I ever had. And people always say, God, how could that be? But it was because before I went in there, they were kind of like, even in my eye, they kind of were a forgotten population. Because unless you're involved with someone that's incarcerated or you work in the field, a lot of the people that are incarcerated to me are the forgotten people. And it was such an honor for me to be chosen to do the work. So I went in and I worked with the pregnant moms and I linked them up with medical care. And while they were incarcerated, I followed their medical care and I advocated for them to stay at that facility so they wouldn't be transferred during the delivery. I wanted them to deliver right there. Wow, wow. So you're talking about pregnant people giving birth in prison. Yes, yes. And they contract with a hospital and all the pregnant moms go to that hospital. But a lot of times the women shared information with me that they didn't share with their medical providers. So we worked in collaboration, just like you talked about. That's why those relationships are so very important. And one of the things I'm really proud of is we stopped the shackling of pregnant women during labor and delivery. I was one of the people that worked to stop it. It was a law, but it wasn't being done. And Again, that was one of my most rewarding jobs because I got an I had the freedom to to get in there and to really, really, really make changes in people's lives. I I was able to uh, contact the family so they could come pick the baby up at the hospital after she delivered. And actually, it was where I found out that I wanted to spend most of my energy into social justice around incarcerated women. Wow. You know, you mentioned the freedom. I, I can, you know, I could testify to this. Being in the field in which I was in, which basically, even though we say criminal justice, still we're looking at social work. Yes. The thing is, the reward of that is, you're not looking at a time clock. Think about the, all the jobs that's out there. And, you know, and they're so confined in one area. They can't be able to get out and go here and do there and have an impact in somebody's life. Because when you're working with that individual, developing a treatment plan, or just through verbal communication, you're not, you're totally engaged in that person. 
Definitely. And, and before you know it, time has passed and you have a, you still have work to do. But that's the beauty of the job, isn't it? It is. It truly is. And it's so rewarding, especially when I would be there when they delivered, because I was really the only person that could come because I was authorized from the jail to be there. So every time they delivered, I'd be right there with her and the baby. And I spend time holding the baby, and, you know, because they only get to stay two days with that baby. After that, they transport it back to jail or prison wow. and the baby goes off. And then that separation is the saddest part of the wow. job. It's the fact that they have to leave each other after all the time they've spent together. Two so, days? Two days. Two days. Two days. And then it's over. The baby's gone. And then they're gone. And, uh, you know, she suffers a lot of depression, but I'm there for her. And it just feels so good to be there for someone at a time when they really need you. It just was such a wonderful, rewarding feeling. But for me, I'm not a bureaucratic person, so I have issues with <laughs> bureaucratic <laughs> systems, right? And so I was getting tired of the bureaucratic system. That's the only reason why I left to retire. And um, But other than that, it was so rewarding because I had to fight all these people to get these things done, the nurses, the doctors, the prison system. And, and it wasn't a fight that was like that. It's kind of a, um, a quiet fight because sometimes you don't want to come out in the open with it. You want to come out and get people to align with you. And then you get what you want done. So you have to use strategy. Yes. Because number one, in the criminal system, criminal justice system, they're paranoid of a lot of people that come in. So I could have got kicked out just as quick as I got in there. <laughs> easy, easy, you know. So I uh, made a lot of uh, headway. It took them about five years to even know who I was. But after they began to know me, they began to trust me and the staff as well as the women. And, th and then that made it very easy for me to move around the way I like to and make the connections that I wanted to make. Folks, you hear this. Think about the jobs that you work on right now. Think about the jobs you may be planning to go in in the future. And think about how so many are bogged down. Do you realize if you can Google this, the majority of people are not satisfied with the jobs that they're in. True. And here we're talking social work, where you're able to get out of the office, where you're able to go to court, or go to this facility, have an impact on someone's life. I can testify to that, Ms. Cummings, that that is very rewarding. And I, uh, I re recently released a video about know when to break away. Yes, I heard that. And, 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 and the thing is, you know, we have a tendency for many people, there are innocent people in prison because Definitely. they followed the destiny of someone else and not their own. Mm -hmm. Because we know our friends. We know our friends who do wrong, who lie, who cheat, who steal. We know our friends. But we also, we need to know there's a time to break away from these friends. So if they have that criminal mindset and want to do something wrong, which I could have been involved in multiple times because of people who I was around, but you gotta know when to break away. You gotta know when to say no. You gotta know, say, don't do that. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not going. Because you just gave America and the world some insight on pregnant women in prison and having their babies, their little infants taken out of their arms. How horrific that is. So look at this today, this vlog cast as preventative services. Well, Janice Cummings, yes. if there's anything on your heart or anything on your mind that has not been said that you would like to say, I'm going to give you the final word. I guess for me, my final word would be, don't be so quick to judge. 
don't be so quick to assume that if a person has a record, a criminal record, that they're that they're at fault all the time. Sometimes it's the system itself. Sometimes it's the background. There's a lot of reasons why people do the things that they do. So don't be so quick to judge and put yourself in that person's position and you will have compassion, love, empathy, and caring for the next person. Cause that's what we need. We're not gonna make it if we still keep going the way we're going. We have to start being compassionate, loving and caring to one another. So those are my parting remarks, loving, caring, compassion, and not too quick to judge. Judge not, lest you be judged. Before you can those of you that are like what you just heard here today, please go ahead and press that subscribe button and follow me on this journey because this is about a journey of life. And also, I will leave a link below of her website so that way you can go directly to it and be able to communicate with Ms. Commons if you so choose and desire to do so. And then again, Janice Commons, I appreciate you being here on my channel and maybe somewhere down the road, we can do this again. Sounds wonderful to me. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. It was an honor to be a guest on your show today. Thank you. Thank you for accepting. And All my right. guests, thank you for watching.